Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters, welcome back to my channel. Today I am filming my project pan update number two. So uh, this year we're using the hashtag team project pan 2020 to connect with other YouTubers who are doing a project pan, whether it be same deal as what I'm doing or a different type. Um, and also that hashtag is being used on Instagram. So if you want to use that hashtag because you're panning something uh, and you want to connect with other people, you want support uh, from people who know what it's like, use a hashtag. It's, it's a thing that we can do now. Yay. So I am doing a full face rolling project pan. Um, so that means I have a full face of products and as I finish something up, I roll a new thing in. Um, I also have like hair and body products and I threw in samples this year because um, I'm trying to whittle down my sample collection and it's working. Um, but I'll get to that in a minute. Let's start with empties because that's the way that I like to start these videos off with the good shit. First empty, Essence Mattifying Powder. So this is a face powder and I finished it. There really wasn't much left when uh, I did my last update. I had pretty big pan if I'm remembering correctly. So I finished that one up, which is great. I, would I buy this again? Look, I probably would to be fair, um, because if you take into consideration like a price line, 40 or 50% off cosmetic sale and then you buy this at 40 or 50% off it literally costs nothing um so yeah I would buy it again I just misted my face with my face mist that's in my project pan because I'm so close to finishing it and I'm actually like there's so little in there and my skin is so dry and I wore some like mattifying products today so I know that if I just like reapply every 10 minutes or so I can probably finish it while I film this video. Okay, my next empties are from my skin category. Um, in my skin category this year, or at least for a few months, I'm doing sheet masks. And I'm throwing in four, so I've got like one each week. And I finished all of them in February. Um, and I really needed them because I ended up with the flu. I was not looking after my skin. It was dry as hell. And to be honest, this was the one that like pushed my skin over the edge of being like struggling to sort of get it back to its normal state. And once I used this, it was just like everything just come together. Everything just, we were happy again. We were in sync. Everything was good. So this is the Benton Snail Bee High Content Mask Pack. I do have a couple more of these left thank God, because I love them. Um, and they are fantastic. They're meant to be, so it's meant to be wrinkle improvement, whitening and skin soothing. And in terms of whitening, they're talking about brightening, not actually like changing the color of your skin. Um, but to be perfectly honest, I just think they're amazing hydrating sheet masks. So I really enjoyed that one. Um, I also had the, I think it's Esfolio Red Ginseng Essence Mask. This was nice, um, hydrating, but not like super, super dope, bleh, super duper hydrating. So I didn't mind it. Then I had the Yet Snow White mask. This is a, another one, they call it whitening, but it's just a brightening mask. Um, I didn't mind it. I wouldn't buy it again though. It was just okay. Um, I also had the Garnier Skin Active Moisture Bomb Sheet Mask. This is the uh, the super hydrating mask, soothing, deeply hydrates, comforts and soothes skin. This one was really nice and I would buy it again. If I could get them on sale at Priceline, I'd buy it. I also have some samples that I managed to finish up. So the Gold Fadden MD Vital Boost Even Skin Tone Daily Moisturizer. It's all right. I think if you had normal skin or even oily skin, um, you'd probably really enjoy it, but it's not enough 
for my dry skin, unfortunately. Uh, the Nooks Hill Prodigies Ore Oil, I actually used the last of this today. So it was up here and I finished it off. I put it all over my body because uh, my body has been really dry. And um, I was like, fuck it, I'm going out later today. I'm wearing a dress. I can be nice and glowy and well hydrated. Um, but you can probably see like it doesn't, it leaves a shimmer on the skin, but it's not like ridiculously glittery or anything like that. Really beautiful oil. It is what you would call a dry oil, so it's not super slick on the skin. I liked it. I would consider buying it again. I would probably buy the uh, Nooks oil without the shimmer in it before I would buy the shimmer one though. So there's that. Uh, and my last sample that I finished is a Bumble and Bumble Hairdressers Invisible Oil. This was pretty good. When I um, talked about having this in um, my project, a lot of people were like, I tried that and it's amazing. It's like my holy grail product. And I can understand why people really love it. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite like holy grail status for me. So I probably... God, we're bright, aren't we? I probably wouldn't purchase it again, to be fair, but I enjoyed using it. Oh my God, I have another empty. It's literally sitting right in front of me and it's a an empty that comes with frustration, but also happiness. Um, it's this. This is the uh, DKNY Delicious Delights in bleh, Cool Swirl. Cool Swirl. So um, when I... This is where I was when I introduced it. This is where I was at last update. And you guys can still see there's product in there. Now, if you watched my update last month, um, I mentioned how the, um, like the little tube on the inside that goes down to the bottom to like suck the perfume up, it doesn't actually reach the bottom. There's quite a big gap between the bottom of the bottle and the tube. And it's got to the point where it's just like, it's so splattery and splurty. And I've got to say, like, all right, if I sort of, like, hold it perfectly flat, which is actually really difficult to do, and then spray myself, I can occasionally get a proper spray that's not just a, like, <clears throat> um, but it's really difficult. And I'm the type of person, perfume is something that I tend to put on just before I leave the house, and I do it in a rush. I grab my perfume off my shelf and I like just spritz it everywhere. I sort of walk into the the cloud of spritz and then I pop it back on my shelf and out I go. I'm not ever going to be the type of person that is going to fuss with a bottle where the tube doesn't reach the fucking product. Like you're not worth it. It's not worth the stress for me or not stress but the annoyance so I'm considering that one done see ya right let's get into progress of other items before I get into introducing my new products so this is the Kiehl's Glow Formula Skin Hydrator um I don't really like this I um Last update, I said I used it as a primer and it just, uh, bleh, the layers upon layers was just too much for me. So what I was going to do, I got a hair stuck to my lip. Uh, what I was going to do was just use it as my moisturizing step because it's quite hydrating. Now, I still got a hair. I've got to fix this. Oh, I got it. That's the most satisfying feeling in the world. Okay, so... I was using this as a moisturizer, which was all good. It works well as a moisturizer. It's nice and hydrating, but I'm pretty sure it broke me out. And like tiny little like clusters of breakouts sort of in this area. So because I'm not like really, really keen on the product, like I don't feel like it does anything miraculous for me, um, I'm going to declutter it. I'm going to declutter it. I'm going to get rid of it. Now, usually um, every, like during the process of this project, I would do a refresh every quarter. So it would actually be end of March 
or start of April when I would do a refresh and that's when I would declutter something like this but I know that I'm not willing to take the risk and use it so I don't see the point in keeping it in the project so she's going to be decluttered it is what it is I will introduce a new primer though all right my foundation covergirl outlast active um so this is all right it's fine like I get along with it but I know that it's not one that I would repurchase in the future um it was 31.78 grams now 28.56 grams I did not wear makeup much in February you're gonna see that as like a consistent throughout most of the products that I'm about to show you but it's all right sometimes you just you can't do it all Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. Okay, so I've been not using this a lot, but when I do, I just sort of use it around my face. I've stopped using it under my eyes completely because it's just too drying under there. Like, when I smile, I look crepey and gross, So, but it's so close to being finished, and I'm like... <laughs> I really want to finish it. Uh, so this was 21.84 grams, now 21.57 grams. It's getting really hard to get product out. I'm scraping the sides. I'm going to take the stopper out this month, which is exciting. Oh, it's time to talk about this. But before we do, let's spritz again. Mmm. So this is the It's Skin Vitaful uh, V10 Mist. Oh my God, it's getting really splurty. I have to like... Hold it like this so that I can actually get product to come out of it. I'm I'm finishing this today. I'm finishing it today. I'm finishing it before this video is done. Urban Decay Gwen Stefani Palette. So this was 258.8 grams. It's now 258.39 grams. All I've been using is Lo-Fi and I use it as a bronzer and I like it. And I think once... Once I pan that, I might give the rest of the palette up. I'm not sure. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the Becca Afterglow palette. And what I'm kind of thinking is I'm trying to pan the highlighters in here. And I think I should be able to pan them before I finish OC. This has a lovely dip in it, but I'm still far off hitting pan. I might move on to trying Angel as a highlighter and I have been playing with OC as a blush but I, I'm not sure how I, how I feel about it. So yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what the fate of this is going to be but at this point my feelings are that the only thing I'm realistically ever going to use and finish is lo-fi and it's getting old anyway. But like these blushes, not going to do it don't care for pink blush at all at the moment and there is literally no point keeping a palette like this in my collection if I know that I'm never going to use these two shades this hush shade is a little bit I don't know I've it's too dark for me as a highlighter like you can see it there it's too dark I'm not going to be able to use it I could use it as a blush topper but realistically am I probably not OC, this could make a really cool blush. I just have to decide if I like that sort of orangey to pink shifty blush on my face. Um, and Angel I can use, but again, you know, I'm not trying to hold on to a palette where I'm kind of like, oh yeah, it's all right. No, I prefer to use something that I'm really enjoying. Moving on to Becca Afterglow. So this was... 75.52 grams it's now 75.22 grams <sighs> these guys they're ready to be repressed I've wanted to repress them for like the past week but I thought I better show them to you before I do that so next update these will be repressed I have a really big dip in um whatever this shade is topaz and I've kind of been using it as like an eyeshadow or an inner corner highlight and now I kind of want to pan it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I... Look. It's so... I was always like, once I finish these two, because I mix them together, I'll get rid of it. Um, I don't mind the Wild Honey. It's meant to be a blush, but I don't mind it as a bronzer. 
Um, I kind of like flip-flopped back and forth on that one. And I was like, I'm never going to finish Topaz, but it's got a pretty decent dip. Oh, look, I don't, I don't know. I just, I'm, I don't know why, but I'm, now that I'm getting close to the point where I know that I could be like getting this out of my life, I'm almost like, I don't know if I want to give it up. All right, Gold Gaga. <laughs> yes. Here she is. So this was 11.62 grams. It's now 11.58 grams. I am wearing it today. I do have an eyeshadow over it. I still love it. You're fab. These take literally years to finish up because I've been panning it for years. Then I have the MAC. Oh my God, really? Oh Lord. Okay, <laughs> then I have the MAC Paint Pot and Painterly. I can't even actually tell you, oh God, now I've got fluff on it. Give me a tissue. I'm wiping that fluff off because I love this product. I am just adoring it. So good. Um, okay, so I have dropped this about 50 times. Like every time I use this, I drop it. And that's why it's sort of pulling away from the, oh, did I stick my nail in it? Me and this product, we're like, so fumbly. This is the most awkward makeup relationship I've ever had in my life. Anyway, dropping it a million times, it's pulling away from the side of the pan. I don't care. I love it. I love it. It's just, I love it. I'm having a great time. So it was 55.07 grams. It's now 54.85 grams. Let's get into some things that really don't have a lot of progress and some things I never even use. This is something that I didn't use. It's the Elizabeth Arden Beautiful Color Bold Defining 24 Hour Liquid Liner in Plum Desire. If I don't use this in March, I'm going to get rid of it. Or if I only use it a couple of times, I'm going to declutter it because I'm just finding at the moment I'm not really wearing eyeliner, um, like wing liner and stuff. And I go through that phase usually at least once a year and I'm just enjoying, like I'm not even wearing false lashes today. I'm just enjoying like mascara, just mascara. So, you know, that's a thing. Um, but this was 8.66 grams. It's still 8.66 grams. Then I have the Catrice um, Liquid Metal Gel Eye Pencil in Black Stage. Um, and this grew. It didn't really. I used it once today. Uh, it was 6.18 grams, now 6.19 grams. It's just my scales aren't perfect and I'm okay with that. Um, I find whenever I mention like my scales not being, you know, perfect. People are like, you've got to calibrate them. Don't breathe on it. Don't put your phone too close to it. Don't like photograph it next to this or blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, guys, it's project pan. <laughs> it's not that deep. It doesn't matter. Um, also I would calibrate it, but I don't have, I, I need to just buy like a little weight that's like one gram so I can calibrate it. But I don't have anything in my life that I am 100% certain of the weight of it. So there's that. Mecca Max Wink Ink Mascara. I love this. And the drier it gets, the better it gets. Um, so this was 20.57 grams, now 20.26 grams. I love it. I don't want it to ever dry up completely or be finished because... I'm currently loving it. It's not the best mascara I've ever used. Don't, don't get it twisted. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. Then I have my Mac, uh, Shape and Shade Brow Tints. I did not use these much at all. Uh, so Fling was nine grams last month. It's still nine grams and Lingering was 8.92. It's now 8.91 grams. Um, I actually, I've got to say, I need to just start using, like, usually Fling and Lingering are, like, my perfect color combo with MAC brow products. Um, if I use the same product and use them together, like, each shade, I get, like, the perfect brow color. As you can see today, it matches, like, spot on to my natural hair color. Um, but I find that because it's two-step and I am not 
really going for like a high maintenance makeup look at the moment. I'm not even reaching for them. I'm using something else. So I need to focus on one over the other and just be okay with my brow color not being exactly the same shade as my hair color. Not that people would be able to tell anyway. Benefit, this is a 24 hour brow setter. So this was 17.29 grams, now 17.26 grams. I actually didn't use this today. So excuse me while I uh, pop this in my brows and get some use out of it. Yay, go me. This is a fantastic brow gel. It's just a clear brow gel. Once it's in there, it locks the brows in place. I do enjoy it. I just forget to use it. Colourpop Lippy Pencil in Beeper. So this was 6.56 grams, now 6.49 grams. I didn't use it a whole lot. Used it a couple of times. This is what it's looking like. It's a lip pencil. I love the color. It's immaculate. Rimmel lipstick in rock and roll nude. Uh, so I think I used this like twice. Um, it was 14.98 grams, now 14.95 grams. Come on, Haley. You can do it. You can pan one lipstick this year. One traditional lipstick. Linda Holberg Blossom Oil. Mm, I'm annoyed at myself. I wanted to pan this th in uh, February. I did not. So I was here and I'm now like down here. Hopefully you can kind of see that. Looks difficult to see. Um, I have discovered that... So I've, I've been using this two ways. Uh, as a cuticle oil and on my lips. If I put this on my lips, I've discovered it will actually like migrate down my chin which is a thing. It doesn't break me out and my skin is really dry, so I don't freak out about that. It's definitely not something that I can wear if I'm wearing makeup though. So it's the sort of thing that I only use at home when I'm like working on the computer. Um, but what I really love this for is actually as a cuticle oil. Um, a lot of cuticle oils are quite thin and it's just like an oil oil. This seems to have more of a like thicker viscosity than most oils and I just find that on the nails that is like awesome so I would consider this a little bit of like almost a hybrid between a like a cuticle butter like one of those balm type ones and a cuticle oil so you know you've got a cuticle um like balm or butter and they're quite thick and even when you you know warm them up and massage them out and stuff um there's still quite a like a thick coating on your cuticles and your nails whereas if you use an oil it's quite thin both are nice both are hydrating i like both i use both but there's something about the consistency of this that just it ticks a box for me and I really really enjoy it so I'm actually going to stop using this on my lips and just use it as a cuticle product which means it's going to take me a lot longer to get through um, but I'm okay with that because using it on my cuticles and my nails is where I really feel like this shines. Nail polish I have my Ciate Mini in Couture I used this once in February. <laughs> so I have no progress to show you on like my little progress line, which was here, but it sits like just under that line. Um, so I pretty much didn't wear nail polish for the whole of February because I was just like, I don't want to put this on and in 24 hours it's going to chip and then I've got to like take it off and do it again. And I just, I couldn't be bothered. And eventually I just put on a gel manicure and I have had one casualty but that's all right um I put on a gel manicure and I was like oh I'm so happy with life so I go through phases um where I'm really dedicated to focusing on traditional nail polishes and it doesn't bother me that like my nails don't hold on to nail polish and it chips and I've got to like reapply it every like day or every second day and then I go through phases where I'm like, 
I don't have time nor patience for that and I just want to have a gel manicure on for two weeks plus and I'm going through that gel manicure phase at the moment. I was hoping that I could get through at least one bottle of nail polish before that sort of was sparked in me but apparently not. Um, I use this on my toenails and that's how I'm going to continue to use this. My toenails like nail polish just doesn't come off them like it can grow out. I won't let that happen. I will take it off probably maybe once a week or once every 10 days and I'll reapply it but it means it's going to take me a while to get through this. It is what it is but I do want that one finished this year please. I do have another perfume in this project. It is the Ralph Lauren Ralph perfume. This is old as the hills. Um, so my line, my introduction line was here and I have used it a little bit but not enough to show any significant progress. So um, yeah, there's, there's no progress. I was trying to focus on the other one, the Cool Swell one from DKNY. Um, and then I was sick and not wearing perfume. And I have also been playing around with some like little tester perfumes as well, just to change things up. My moisturizer, my body product. So this is the Jergens Deep Restoring Argan Moisturizer. This was brand new when I introduced it last month and I'm currently down here. So that looks like a lot of product used. It, When the product's full, it doesn't come right up to the top. It's probably around here somewhere. Um, but I think it's fair to keep in mind that like I was using a skinny part of the bottle. I've now reached the widest part of the bottle. Um, so my progress next month won't be probably as uh, impressive as what this appears to be. Um, but I love this moisturizer. It's fantastic. I love all Jergens moisturizers. I don't think I've used a single one that I didn't like. Um, and I'm happy to keep going with it. Thanks for keeping my body moisturized. My hair product is the Nature Box Secret Repair Cream. So I was here. I'm now down here. I have been using this as like a after wash like leave-in product in the lengths of my hair. And I also gave it a go as a pre-wash treatment. Um, I went camping um, with friends or up on a friend's property. And um, when I came home, like being near the fire and being out in the heat and with the dust and all that stuff, my hair felt crispy and dry. And I was like, she needs moisture before she gets a wash. So I used some of this and I was like, mm, okay, that's a really great way to use this product as well. So I've been doing some pre-wash treatments too. Um, and that's probably why I've made such good progress because I've probably done three pre-wash treatments since I discovered that it works nicely as a pre-wash treatment. So I'm really enjoying this product. I don't think, like, it contains no silicones, which is so good. My hair is not a fan of silicones at the moment. Um, and it's um, it's got 100% cold-pressed avocado oil, which my hair seems to enjoy. So I'm liking this product. All right, let's get into my leftover samples. Samples that I haven't finished. Some that I haven't even touched. <laughs> So I have the Dermalogica Skin Perfect Primer, didn't touch it. I have oh, the MAC Prep and Prime Natural Radiance Base in Radiant Yellow, haven't touched it. Um, the NARS uh, All Day Luminous Weightless Foundation, I did use this tiny bit. This is where it's currently at. I used it, I think, two applications. This is actually going to take me quite a while to go through. I love this foundation, um, which is awesome. I have the shade medium to Santa Fe. It's not quite right for me. Um, sorry, I was looking at this bit of hair and I'm like, I want to brush that back. I don't, I don't know what side it's on. Um, so this is just a little bit too dark for me, but I would definitely consider buying this in a shade, like maybe one or two shades down and it would be perfect, but I can make it work and I'm, I like it. I'm going to finish it. I also have the ColourPop Ultra Satin Lip in Magic Wand. I'm wearing it today. 
I like the color. I have to pair it with a gloss or a balm or something like that to make it work. But the color is gorgeous. It's just going to take me a while to go through it because when I'm reaching for lip products these days, I'm reaching for like really hydrating stuff. I just mostly I just want to wear lip balm or lip gloss to be fair. Then I have the L'Occitane Immortel Divine Cream. I haven't used it. Some people were warning me when I introduced this last month. They were like, just be careful. It can be a bit full on, make some people's skin, like if they're sensitive, it doesn't get along well with them. Um, I saw those comments. I thank you for the advice. If it causes me any issues when I do get around to trying it, I will get rid of it. Uh, then I have, have the Ren Evercalm Ultra Comforting Rescue Mask. This is fine. I I put it on when my skin was a little after camping because my skin was a bit dry and just not, you know, not the happiest it usually is. I was a bit red. And I can't say that when I took it off, I saw any like miraculous changes, but it was fine. It felt comfortable on my skin, all that jazz. So I will finish it up. Um, it's currently here. Then I have the Whey Finishing Cream. So I was here last update. I'm now down here. Uh, this has been okay. It's all right. I, again, I wouldn't buy this one. I feel like it makes my hair, it gives my hair texture without it feeling like dry or crispy, which I do like, but I think it weighs my hair down a little bit. And I, I only put it in the length, so I would never put this in the roots of my hair, but um, yeah, I don't mind it. It's okay. Like, she looks shiny, doesn't she? She's all right. So I'll use it, but I don't think it's one that I would repurchase. Oh my God, there is shit all over my desk. Let's get into the new products. Primer, I'm bringing... Oh, stop falling over, guys. We're almost done. Smashbox, Primerizer, Primer and Moisturizer. I'm introducing it. I think I've used this like twice. It's pretty much... Full. Like I couldn't even mark it. I did weigh it. So I'm going to, you know, maybe keep track of it both with like a line and with weight. Um, but yeah, she's coming in and I'm getting through my primers this year. The goal is to either finish or like work out what primers that I do want to keep and don't want to keep and just have only the best of the best the things that actually work for me do something for me in my stash otherwise like for primer I'm just like what's the point what's the point most of them don't do anything my powder I have the Australis fresh and flawless in nude um, so I actually have like three of these in my stash they're all in different colors I've got like you know my winter colors and then sort of mid season and then summer color. I don't know if I'll ever be able to use my summer color again. At this point, it feels like I won't, but this is a really good shade for me. It's pretty much brand new. I've probably used it less than a handful of times, um, but there we go. We're going to get through that. My setting mist. Here's a reminder. Use this one. Finish it. Finish it. Wait, wait. Let me readjust you. Mmm, smells a bit citrusy, getting splattery, who cares, let's finish it. Oh my god, look, look at this. I'll do one more application after I finish up this video and then it's, I'm considering it done, I'm considering it done. Um, Morphe, I'm actually introducing a Morphe uh, setting mist, it's a continuous setting mist. Uh, so I've weighed this one. It was 85.51 grams. Um, I'll be curious to see how much I go through. Contains 82.8 mil. Um, and I don't know. It's a funny one because it's like a, a pressurized can. It's hard to tell what's in there. Um, now this, love the mister. It's a microfine continuous mister. Best fucking packaging from Morphe ever. I like the scent of it as well. It's quite fresh. Um, now, I've used this a few times since I've had dry skin, and I think I like it. Um, on oily skin, not good. Broke down my makeup really quickly. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a go. I'm gonna have a go. And if I actually hate it, I'll swap it out next month because that's my monthly refresh. 
I'm bringing in a lip gloss. This is the Soap and Glory Sexy Mother Pucker in Rose and Shine. Uh, this is like brand new. I used it once. I paired it with um, the ColourPop liquid lipstick today. So she's brand new. Oh, look, aren't they beautiful together? Maybe that's how I'll get through this, just pairing it with this. Um, so yeah, that's in the project now. I do want to work through a lot of lip glosses this year because I can. I'm in a really good position uh, with my dry lips and my dry lips loving lip gloss um i'm in a good position to use up quite a few if i stick with it for skin i'm continuing with sheet masks i have four new ones here i've got the sassatini uh snake revitalizing face mask i've used these before they're very nice um i have another yet sheet mask this is a heart beating mask it's a nutrition mask then i have one of these which i'm not sure i'm gonna like because i brought God, I've had these for ages. I bought a bunch of these in Japan and I they're like character sheet masks. So when you put them on, it's got like a print of the character. This is a Sailor Moon one. Um, I can't say I've used one of these that I actually really, really enjoyed yet. So I was like, look, let's get through it. Um, then I have the Double and Zero uh, collagen sheet masks. These are really great as well. So, and I've got a whole bunch of them, so... There we go, four new sheet masks. Now I finished up three of my little samples, so I'm gonna introduce some more. I finished up one skin one, one body and one hair. Um, I'm not introducing any more hair samples at this point because most of the hair samples that I have are um, little bottles of Moroccan oil, um, which I use for traveling and I like, I love it. It's kind of like my be all end all hair product. Um, and then shampoo and conditioners, which I also use for traveling or like if I'm having a sleepover somewhere or something like that. So hair products at this point are pretty good. I do have four hair samples that I've never used before. Um, I've pulled them out. I'm going to play with them. I'm going to test them out. I'm going to see if I even like them. Um, if I find something that I like enough and just want to like finish, I'll introduce it maybe next month um, or if I find something that's like amazing and would be really good for travel uh, like a styling product or something like that then I'm gonna hold on to that for travel but hair samples actually under control um, another area of my samples that is under control is my body section I do have a body sample that I'm gonna introduce but otherwise She's all like, she's schmick. I'm so happy. I've got some like little bottles of body wash and then little bottles of moisturizer. I've got some little hand creams, little foot creams that are really good for like sticking in my handbag or traveling sleepovers, stuff like that. So I've got two sections of my samples under control. The sections that are really bad are like face, face, serums, moisturizers, masks, my fucking god masks so that's where i'm going to be sort of trying to put my energy but there are two things that i want to introduce my body product is a soap this is from centure de orient it is the jasmine of arabia soap now when i saw this in my little sample box i was like do I keep that for travel or just pan it? And I'm like, pan it. Because I'm not going to take a little bar of soap traveling or to a sleepover. Because what the fuck am I going to do with it when I've opened it? So, little bar of soap. This is also meant to be quite a fancy bar of soap. It came out of the Netta Porter advent calendar. Not last year, but the year before. So, fancy soap. Uh, and then I have a Glow Recipe Watermelon Sleeping Mask Sachet. So I thought I would chuck that one in. I really want to focus on this and the Ren Evercalm. Um, and I thought a sachet, it's not going to like take away too much from working on these guys. So, you know, sometimes you've got to make things easier so you can tackle other shit. So that's it for my project pan update number two. Um, I'm happy with how everything is going. Oh my God, let's use more of this. Mm -hmm. Happy, 
yuck. I'm happy with how everything is going right now. Um, I just really want to finish this face mist. Like, come on. Mm. This is how dry my skin is. I can literally spray face mist on my face like 20 times a day and it just looks normal. Or it just starts to look more glowy and hydrated. So there we go. Um, but is it okay to call that done? I think it might be. She's done. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today on this uh, little adventure of finishing up my Vitaful Skin Mist. Uh, let me know how you guys are going with your project pans and I will see you in the next one. Bye.